your statement. And it's clear your statement is rightly placed on our rules. Mr. Speaker, where we disagree with you is your conclusion. Mr. Speaker, I want to make reference... Why did you say where we disagree with where you? Where I disagree with you is your conclusion. Mr. Speaker, and I make reference to our standing order 76. And with your permission, I read. 76.1. Every application to Parliament shall and I think the word there is shall, be in the form of a petition. And every petition must be presented by a member of parliament who shall be responsible for the observance of the rules contained in Appendix A. Mr. Speaker, I heard you, you said, you yourself alluded to the fact that members of parliament could raise matter that could be referred to privileges and civil society will equally do the same. The Speaker, with the greatest of respect to your office, I disagree with you vehemently when you, Mr. Speaker, want to do that yourself. Because there has to be a member of parliament who has to do that according to our, our rules. And Mr. Speaker, Honorable Member, what, Mr. read the standing order again. Mr. Speaker, we will be careful to listen to Read the standing order again. Mr. Speaker, it will be good to listen to me. When I'm done, you have the privilege to make your, your I'm not the chief whip. You have to first read end. the standing orders again. Mr. Speaker, I have read what I want to read. <laughs> and I've stopped where I want to stop. Honorable Member. Fair, you listen to me. And when you, when you hear me, Will you, resume Speaker, your you seat? have to hear me first. Will you resume your seat? Mr. Speaker, you have to hear me first. We Will you resume you. your seat? Mr. Speaker, we heard you in silence. Okay. You, please, 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 no, please, no. Mr. Speaker, we heard you in silence. Mr. Speaker, it is only fair that you hear us, and when we are done, after the ruling and the decision to be taken, Mr. Speaker, it's absolutely yours. But to listen to us, Mr. Speaker, you must listen to us. And Mr. Speaker, when you are making reference to the ruling of the High uh, the Appeals Court, Mr. Speaker, the interesting thing that you left out, and I draw your attention to this, is that when that Appeals Court made that ruling, it concluded with this. After the court has said that the, the, the seat will be declared automatically, it went ahead to say, that under the 1992 constitution, however, it is the High Court which can declare a member of Parliament seats as vacant, without providing any reasons or legal basis for the assertion. More particularly, when the provisions in question do not either explicitly or impliedly rope in the High Court. This is what the Appeals Court did. So, Mr. Speaker, with the greatest of respect, we agree, you made a statement, but your conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the danger, colleagues, as we sit in this chamber, is this. If we allow speakers to take petition from outsiders, and so more to, with petition from outsiders, to defer members of parliament to privileges, colleagues, we'll be doing ourselves the greatest disservice. Because we will one day get a dictator speaker who will simply take statements from outsiders and begin to penalize individual members of parliament. It is on this basis that I call on all of us that to resist the attempt by Mr. Speaker to refer our colleagues to the privileges. Yeah. And if there's justification, let us get one of us as member of parliament who is convinced that our colleagues need to go to privileges to do that and not to allow speaker to do this. Because today, we may have a speaker that we may think will be, will be unbiased. If we allow this to stand, it will be up and tomorrow it may hurt it may hurt each and every one of us. And it is on that basis that I stand to say, Mr. Speaker, I want to come properly under Order 935 to say this is your decision to refer our police to the privileges will be challenged motion. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.